What is up YouTube? Thanks for tuning in today. One of the reasons I started this vlog is I want to make real estate easy, relatable, and uh, kind of break things down into step-by-steps. So today we are going to go over how to make an offer on a house. I broke it down into eight steps. I broke the whole real estate process down into eight steps. I made it easy to understand, so I'm really excited to share it with you. So without further ado, let's roll that intro. so you're ready to buy a house. First of all, congratulations. That is so exciting. When you start the house hunting process, step one of the real estate process is to find yourself a realtor. How do you find a real estate agent? Well, luckily, I've already done a video on that. I'm gonna link it right up here and go ahead and click that if you haven't watched it, but if you have watched it, you already know how to find yourself a realtor. So on to step number two. Step number two of the real estate process, get pre-approved. What does pre-approved mean? Pre-approved means you've sat down with a loan officer and that loan officer has looked over uh, your debt to income ratio, your assets, your liabilities, your income, your full-time income, any part-time income. And they take all this financial data and they take a look and say, okay, can this person buy a house? And when you sit down with a loan officer, they'll be able to answer any and all questions relating to loans. But once your loan officer has reviewed all your financial information, they'll be able to say, yes, you can afford X house, or they will tell you, yes, you can afford up to 250,000, 150,000, half a million dollars, $3 million, whatever uh, your financial situation allows, they'll let you know if you can afford that or not. I always suggest getting pre-approved before you even go out and look at houses, just because, especially in Minnesota right now, we're in a very hot market. Uh, a house will hit the market on a Friday, they'll have multiple offers by Saturday, and they'll be making a decision by Sunday. So if you're not pre-approved, ready to pull the trigger on a house, right away and you go and see a house on Friday and then you say, oh, hey, let me go get pre-approved. Then they can't pre-approve you till Sunday. Well, boom, that house is off the market already. So as soon as that loan officer hands you that pre-approval letter says, hey, you are good to go, boom, you are ready to go look at houses. Step number three in the home buying process, once you're pre-approved, you are ready to go look at some houses. So that's the next step. Go out, look at some houses. Now you may be asking, Ben, what is normal? for people to look at houses. And the answer is, there isn't really a true normal. Usually first time home buyers are comfortable putting in an offer between five and 15 homes. Now that doesn't mean if you're ready to pull the trigger after the second house you see, pull the trigger, especially in Minnesota. Like I said, we're in a very hot market right now. But at the same time, I've had a first time home buyer. I showed him 78 houses before he bought one. That is my record. I would rather not break that record, but at the same time, if it's just not working for you, just not clicking for you, my philosophy is keep showing houses until you find one you love. So step number four in the process is finding the house that you love and the house that you're going to put an offer in on. So you've been out looking at houses for a while, most likely you're in that five to 15 range, you're ready to put an offer in on the house. You walk into a house and you vibe with the house. Everything about it, it's got the granite countertops, the stainless steel appliances. Maybe there's some people watching that say, I hate granite countertops, I hate stainless steel appliances. Whatever the house looks like, you'll fall in love with one, and when you do fall in love with one, it's time to make an offer. So how long does it take to make an offer? For me, when I leave a showing and my clients say, Ben, this is the house, this is what we want to offer on, it takes me about 15 minutes to draw up the paperwork. And then I also sit down with my clients and talk through all the paperwork. It takes about an hour to get through. So um, if I have the time, literally from walking out of the house that they know they want, it takes about an hour and 15 minutes, boom, you're ready to make an offer. So it can be very quick, or at least that's how I run my business. I'm very quick about it. Now, once you make that offer, there might be a little back and forth between you and the seller. You might put forth a really good first offer, but they counter on some terms, whether that be closing date, purchase price, closing costs, a million different things that you can counter on. But once you extend that offer, it's all negotiable. And step number five in the real estate process is accepting an offer. Let's say you put the offer forth towards the seller and they absolutely love every part of the offer. It's exactly what the sellers are looking for. It's exactly what the buyers are looking for. Boom, you come to terms and you accept an offer. Once you get signatures 
on the paperwork, both from the seller and the buyer, boom, you have an accepted agreement. Congratulations, you just offered on a house. Having an accepted offer is scary, exciting. It's a bunch of different emotions all at once. But something to know is once you come to terms and you have signatures on both sides from the buyer and the seller, you're in a binding legal agreement with the seller. And so at that point, there isn't a whole lot of options for the seller to back out. There's options for you to back out, which brings me to step number six. Step number six is technically an optional step, but I always recommend doing this. It's called an inspection contingency. Whenever you put forth an offer, an inspection contingency is essentially a certain amount of days. In Minnesota, an average time frame is about 10 days, but 10 days that you can walk away from this house for any reason. Now, during the inspection time frame, you hire yourself an inspector, and what they're gonna do, you know what? I'm gonna show you what they do. Now, an inspector's job is to walk around your house and literally outline everything that is wrong with the house. They are literally supposed to find everything that's wrong. Now, it's a visual inspection. They're not gonna be able to drill into any holes into any walls or anything like that, but they might find things like, oh, you're missing grout right here. Oh, this is an outlet within six feet of a faucet. It should be GFCI. They'll even get underneath your sinks. Take a look, see if you got any leaky pipes or anything like that. These ones look good. They'll even run all the appliances, make sure that they're running well. Yeah, it looks like this refrigerator's working well. And it looks like this dishwasher works well. So those are the type of things that inspectors are going to find. Most everything that inspectors are going to find, daily maintenance items. If you were living in the home, you wouldn't even know that it's wrong. Now anything that that inspector finds, you can ask for the seller to fix. Legally, you can ask for anything. I've had buyers ask before, oh, we'd like them to repaint the master bedroom. That's not an item that should be asked for from the inspection. Now legally, we can ask for anything. but. Little items like that shouldn't be a big deal. The things that you're looking for from the inspection are the furnace doesn't work. Therefore, that's gonna be a $5,000 fix as soon as you s step into the house. Or there's a structural issue that's gonna cost $30,000 to fix. I always tell my buyers, anything that is asked for from the inspection period should be a make or break issue. Because if we ask for it from the seller and the seller says no, that is grounds for cancellation and we can cancel the purchase agreement. So the items that you're asking for should be big safety or non-working issues. I'm about to shatter somebody's universe right now. When you put an offer in on a house, there is no such thing as a perfect house. I know, I know, it's, it's mind blowing. The most expensive house in Minnesota right now, um, I believe is on the market for like 24, $25 million. And even that house at $25 million is gonna have some issues. So having issues during your inspection period is totally normal. So after inspection, step number seven is you get into pending status. So once you come to terms with the seller saying, hey, I want you to fix X, Y, and Z, and they say, yep, we'll fix that, you are now in pending status. I would say 98% of homes or something like that. Uh, that's not scientific, I don't know that for a fact, but uh, most homes that are in pending status will close. There is the possibility that things may happen. I've had it before where a client a week before closing, they lose their job, therefore they can't afford the house anymore. Well, even though that house was in pending status, the offer fell through. But I would say the majority of times a house is in pending status it will go on to closing day, which brings me to step number eight, closing day. Closing day is an exciting day. Closing day is a day I get to uh, usher my clients to the table. I get to shake some hands, kiss some babies. Sometimes I get those mixed up where I shake babies and kiss hands. Yeah, that was a bad, that was a bad closing. But closing is a happy time because you go to the closing table, you sign all the paperwork, all the documents, it takes about an hour, and once that hour is up and uh, the title company says, yes, you are now the owner of that house, the house is yours. The keys are yours. You'll get the garage door openers. And as soon as you walk away from that closing table, boom, the house is now yours. So those are the eight steps uh, in a average transaction. One thing about real estate is there is no straight cookie cutter transactions. There's always something different, but uh, that's a general guideline that you can kind of um, adhere to. So I hope this video helps. 
anybody who's out there uh, looking at houses right now and they're not really sure what the next step in the process is, follow this video if you're working with another agent or if you're working with me too. Uh, watch this video, hopefully you got some value out of it. On this channel, I like to vlog my clients, you know, show the process, but I also wanna be able to educate you guys as well. So uh, if you have any suggestions of things I should tackle about the real estate process or things outside of real estate, anything real estate related, Put it in the comments below. Let me know what you guys would like to see on this next, uh, on the next vlog. But until then, I will see you guys on the next vlog. Peace.